In today's video, we will be breaking down one of dog breeders' nightmare, the parasitic infection of puppies called giardiasis. This will be part one of a two-part video where we'll be also discussing coccidiosis as well. Giardia and coccidia are two main parasites you will need to know as a dog breeder. Today, I will discuss everything you'll need to know from its mechanism of infection, signs and symptoms, diagnosis, treatment, and last but not least, how to prevent the infection of our puppies. Welcome back to the channel. It is Zion here at X Designer Breeds, where we strive to educate you, the viewer, on everything fur babies, from puppy to adulthood. If you're a dog breeder, then you'll know two of the most dangerous intestinal parasites that may affect our puppies are Giardia and Coccidia. I know I have unfortunately dealt with them in the past, and they are difficult to get rid of. After worms, they are the most common and can be very deadly if left untreated. And so, you as a dog breeder will need to know how our puppies become infected with these diseases, what to do to treat them, and more importantly, how to prevent them from reinfecting our babies. In this video, we'll be talking about giardiasis, and in my next video, linked here, we'll be discussing coccidiosis. So, what is giardiasis, you may ask? This is essentially the most common intestinal parasitic infection of most dogs and is even more prevalent in our puppies. Giardia duodenalis is a single cell protozoa to cause this. Our puppies become infected with the cyst stage of the parasite by ingested fecal contaminated food and water or by self-grooming if the paw pads and fur is covered in feces. Some puppies may become infected by eating contaminated food by other puppies or dogs, as well as eating grass or dirt. Once this cyst is ingested into the body, it is converted into a trophozoid or feeding form, which then attaches itself to the intestinal wall of the puppy to start feeding and start growing and reproducing. Then this transforms into more cysts, which are excreted into the feces of the pups to then continue its life cycle. The cycle from ingestion to shedding usually takes 5 to 12 days. Giardiasis are very resilient and can live in the environment for weeks or even months, which may result in the difficulty of just getting rid of, rid of them. Let us move on to the signs and symptoms of Giardia of an infected puppy. The most common sign of Giardia is diarrhea, which is followed by a very foul odor. Sometimes the diarrhea can consist of mucus and also even blood. This may then result in a very dehydrated puppy, which may then become very lethargic and weak, and if left untreated, as I previously stated, may result in death. This is because giardia will compromise the immune system of, puppy, of the puppy, causing it to fail to thrive. Some puppies may also be asymptomatic, where they do not show any signs of the infection whatsoever. But how do you diagnose Giardia? Diarrhea may be a symptom of various other illnesses, and so, to diagnose the disease, you will have to bring your puppy along with a fresh fecal sample in a sealed bag, such as a Ziploc bag, to your vet. Giardiasis may be difficult to diagnose, only because the Giardia cyst is not consistently shed in the feces, but only intermittently. So, there are two tests that may be conducted to diagnose the disease. The primary one is done by way of a fecal flotation, and this is where the feces is added to a mixture of zinc sulfate solution, which causes the cyst to float to the top, which is then smeared and inspected under a microscope. The second test, which is a more precise test, is called the ELISA or SNAP test or enzyme-linked immunoassay test, which is done by detecting the presence, the presence of antigens or foreign proteins in the stool. Now, let us break down how to treat Giardia, which is very simple because I've used these medications before and I can guarantee that they work. There are two primary medications that may be used to eradicate the infection. The first one, which may be prescribed by your vet, is fenbendazole, 
which is an antiprotozoal medication such as Panicure or Safeguard. These products can be bought over the counter and can also be used to warm puppies 6 weeks of age or older. So it is also wise to start them on these dewormers at 6 weeks just to prevent the occurrence of a disease. Then the second medication which is more widely prescribed is metronidazole or metronidazole or flagyl. This is, a, this is an antibiotic which is used to treat the infection typically given over a course of anywhere between 3 to 10 days. If desired, both medications, the fenbendazole and metronidazole can be used together. Giardia is not transmissible, transmissible from puppies to humans. However, there are difficult genotypic variations of Giardia which us as humans can contract but that calls for another video. Let's talk preventative measures, which can is probably single-handedly the most important part of this video. Puppies can become reinfected, especially if you as the breeder or owner do not rid your environment of any cysts that may further contaminate your puppies from puppies' food and water. Bear in mind that Giardia can survive up to months in the environment. And so, to limit exposure and reinfection, here are some key notes to take away. Remove dog feces from your yard and kennel regularly and quickly when noticed. Use caution when allowing your dog in outdoor spaces where other dogs may visit such as dog parks and hiking trails, so on and so forth. Do not leave standing water in your yard. Bleach and disinfectants are generally not effective in treating outdoor areas, especially grass or dirt but use them to clean your kennels and also indoor surfaces. You can also use ammonium-based disinfectants as well, and those are known to work really, really great. Don't forget that the hygiene of your puppy is critical as well. Clip in here around the sanitation region, wiping with baby wipes after defecation, and routinely bathing are key. Guys, this brings us to the end of the video. Don't forget to check out my next video where I will be discussing coccidia and coccidiosis, a more deadlier form of parasite to infect our babies. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting for? Please go ahead and subscribe, like this video if you like this content, and don't forget to share as well. See you guys in the next video.